Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening uh, Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and with me today is J.B. Portello, and she is a fellow master gardener from Benton County and a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club, mm -hmm. and also a master composter. Yes. That's a, quite an honor. To be whatever that com means. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> but today we're going to be discussing um, composting and other gardening events coming up and um, what to do in your garden in September. There's a few things we have to do in our garden uh, at the end of the summer now. So, but there's not very many sp events coming up, gardening events. You might want to walk the trails at Compton and see the, the fall, um, you know, plants that are blooming every month or something else blooming. Sometimes every week it changes. So you might want to walk those trails or the trails at Crystal Bridges. They have such wonderful uh, plants and, and native plants. and They're doing a monarch walk there very soon too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, so yes. we have to check check the um, website for uh, Crystal Bridges. Just you know, type in Crystal Bridges and you'll get them. And so they have great programs yes. there for the, the uh, gardens and the trails. So, but today, um, oh, we also need to talk about the Bella Vista Garden fall plant sale. Yes, That's we're having one. That's good. Early October, so it's October 3rd. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be at a different location this year. It's going to be at Allen's Foods in the parking lot. Um, this way we're bringing the plants out to the public and they don't have to come to us, uh, you know, in the wastewater plant. So uh, we will be having um, the sale from 8 to 1. And, uh, it's, and Allen's is on Highway 71. I think everybody knows where Allen's is. And we have hostas, trees, shrubs, perennials, bulbs, several types of iris, um, surprise lilies, and a variety of bulbs. And we may have um, the daffodil that's called Bella Vista. That's so exciting. Art, this is a whole, we could probably yes. do a whole program on just the Bella Vista daffodil. It's just wonderful. And I think you're going to see it everywhere next year. Yes. So um, anyway, you might be able to buy the, those if they come in in time. So. But that's, uh, mark your calendar for that's October 3rd from 8 to 1. Yes. And we have great fall plants. So, and the, but what we want to talk about today is composting, because mm -hmm. that's going to help all your plants. And it's just a wonderful thing to do. And um, it's easy and um, it's not difficult. But a lot of people think that if you do that, it's going to be smelly and attract rodents. And, no. you know, it, and that's not the case. No, not so, at all. But when you went through your classes um, through this composting, I'm sure you learned all about composting, every, every element of it. I did. But Would this be a good time to show my book? You think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this book is one that we use for the master composting class. And you know, it's just like anything else. This way? Yes. <laughs> Up. There we go. Uh, it's just like any other book. You know, when you go to college, you go through the basics. And then when you get to the master part, they tell you to throw the book away and just do what you know and what you've learned. Mm -hmm. So, but it is a great book to start with. Yes, to, to start, start with. Yeah. So, but well, there's there's so much to the composting mm -hmm. that people are confused about, like the green and the brown and all that. So, well, you know, it's the ultimate recycling mm -hmm. is what it is because what other or what most people think of you would be throwing away. Uh, putting in your trash, putting mm -hmm. in your garbage, like banana peels and mm -hmm. apple cores and oh, yeah. and fall leaves and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's really a way to recycle that and turn it into something pretty amazing. It it'll is. Transform your garden is mm -hmm. what it'll do. Uh, there's some rules uh -huh. uh, to follow when learning how to compost, but rest, rest assured they're very basic. Mm -hmm. No one should ever get all excited about, oh, I have to have just this amount and this amount and I have to turn it this away. You don't. No. It depends on how fast you want it. Because mm -hmm. you can turn around this compost pretty quickly. You can, you can. But there, it does take a little effort to do that. Absolutely. But if absolutely. you just want the compost and you don't want a lot of work, there's a w lot of ways you can do that. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, we do have a, a chart of some different kinds of compost that you could actually do. Right. Um, if we could take a look at that, that would be great. Yeah, because there's um, different um, yes. ways to compost. There are. And the, the, and the basic way is just to have it like a compost mound. Mm -hmm. um, one of the really cool things they do at Peel, uh, Peel Mansion or Compton Gardens, they have a, a tree fort 
which is really our leaf forts, what mm -hmm. they call it. And actually, it's just a round wire, mm -hmm. and they fill fill it with leaves. Right. It looks like the, like the top middle, you know. That's uh, right, the one in there. the middle. And then, of course, you can do the wooden pallets. Mm -hmm. You can do so many things with pallets, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You can actually do a garbage can or a can and put holes in it mm -hmm. for aeration. I think we have that on the... Yes, we have that's, that on the That's screen. the leaf. Uh, that's, that's the, the leaf, leaf one. Just some maybe port. chicken wire or some kind of fencing wire. That's right. You know, and then and it decomposes from the bottom. You just mm -hmm. keep adding to the top. Mm -hmm. The wooden pallet. Mm -hmm. Um, those are pretty standard. Yeah. Now those you do need to turn with a fork, a pitchfork, to or, stir it or up. something to stir it up to mm -hmm. get air and water down in there. Right. And then th we have the trash can part I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, that's just really a, a regular trash can just with, holes. And with holes in it to make sure that the water drains out, not too much water, mm -hmm. it gets aerated, the whole thing. And I do have a container that is similar to that, but mm -hmm. it's basically made for composting. It has a lid and it has the vents and all that. Right. So it has a little door I can open to scoop it out at the bottom, you know, and you can go and buy those, you know, oh, yes. those type of things. Or you can make your own with the trash can, so you it can. comes out about the same. Uh, and then another kind, uh, these, this looks very con confusing and mm -hmm. difficult, but it isn't really. It's a tumbler. Right. Uh, you have to be a little careful with those because they can get heavy after a while. Yeah, if you get a big tumbler, <laughs> sometimes you don't have the strength to turn it. That's right. And we've had some of our members had to just, you know, get rid of their tumbler or give it away because they didn't have the strength to turn it. That's so right. a smaller tumbler is easier to turn. Exactly. So. And then, of course, there's the traditional bins, the three bins that uh, we used in, in training, mm -hmm. really. We, we would actually have one that was almost <laughs> finished one that was just starting, mm -hmm. and, and you can in the turn it turn it from bend to bend. Mm -hmm. But you know, all of that being said, the, the first thing to do is, you know, after you decide what you're going to compost in, you need to think about aesthetically where it's going to be in your yard. Right. Uh, you want it as close to the garden as you can get it, because mm -hmm. I mean, why walk distances and have to worry about right. that? Well, I have all three. I have three different types because mm -hmm. I have the the mound mm -hmm. on the edge of the, of the woods, and then I have the, the um, circles with the leaves in them out in the woods, and right. they, you know, they just kind of disappear. You don't hardly see them. You don't. And then I also have the composter, the bin, mm -hmm. you know, that I use, so. Now, I actually have uh, worm, or oh, you have worm, worm castings, castings as well mm -hmm. that I do. Yeah, that's another way to compost. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So. Well, a lot of it depends on, uh, you know, how much will you be composting? Mm -hmm. If you have a large garden, of course, you'd want a bigger bin. Mm -hmm. If you have a small garden, you can easily get by with uh, something much smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, if if your, your yard is, uh, you have like spent flowers or weeds or things like that, uh, and not a lot of browns, because we'll get into mm -hmm. what the difference is in a few minutes, but um, you know, it's, it's, it depends on what you have to put in there and mm -hmm. what you're going to use it for. Right, because like the side one I have with the, just the mound, mm -hmm. sometimes when he cuts the grass, that's too much clippings to that's put right. in there at that's one right. time. So then I just put the extra clippings in that mound and I don't worry about, you know, browns and greens in that mound. I let nature take care of it. That's right. But I, in the compost bin, then I kind of regulate what goes in. But you know what? Compost just happens. It happens. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> it just does. Yeah. Um, in general, plant matter mm -hmm. is what you'd want to what you want to put in your compost bin. Right. And it's, at some point, a plant uh, is. If at some point it was a plant, it's good to put in the bin. Mm -hmm. Now, that automatically eliminates things like meat and dairy and bones and things like that. And now you can put animal uh, waste in there if they eat plants. Mm -hmm. So that means no dog, no cat, right? Or anything like that at all. Would it be like rabbits or Yes, or anything that would eat plants mm -hmm. and process horse it that way. Uh -huh. Aged horse manure. Because those sorts of things attract bacteria and mm -hmm. pests. And that's the bacteria is what's working in there. That's right. That's breaking up all that. That's right. But we don't want harmful bacteria. Right, right. Uh, we categorize uh, compost things as browns and greens. Now the greens are the nitrogen rich and they tend to have more moisture. Those are those mm -hmm. grass, grass clippings that you right. were talking about. Mm -hmm. And they heat things up oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. And they break down faster. Mm -hmm. The browns are carbon rich and they contain less moisture and take longer to break down. So it's like dead 
plants or leaves, leaves. Uh, yeah. small branches. Mm -hmm. um, greens include vegetable scraps, grass clippings, weeds, coffee grounds, mm -hmm. um, animal manure, and eggshells. Well, see, I don't put the weeds in there too much because I'm afraid of the weed seeds. If it doesn't get hot enough, then and I used seeds. to think that as well. Yeah. But as long as they're just freshly pulled weeds, they're just greens. Oh, okay. You don't put anything in there that's gone to seed because oh. otherwise you raise incredibly Redible. beautiful weeds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want those. We don't want that. We got enough but of those. Egg plant egg shells are really good too. Mm -hmm. Now the important thing is to wash the protein out of them. Uh huh. And crush them up finer because they'll they'll go they'll die they'll degrade faster than right. decompose. Wow. Browns are leaves and straw and shredded newspaper. Mm -hmm. You can easily put that in there. Cardboard, the toilet paper rolls, you can mm -hmm. even do that. Twigs, sawdust. Now be careful about mm -hmm. the sawdust because you don't really know where it's you know, from. Where it's from. We really exactly. Don't. Exactly. Yeah. Because if they had the sawdust from a treated lumber, mm -hmm. you know, those uh, <laughs> treatments that they use on that could affect the micro microisms in the in the Compost. And that's that right. Won't work as well. Now, if you just have a tree in your yard that's mm -hmm. sawed down, you can put a little bit of yeah. that in there. Yeah. Yeah. But those fall leaves, you know, nobody should ever bag up leaves and take them away somewhere. No, They're no. just valuable. Well, you know, <laughs> Tony Lacosse always said that leaves should never leave your garden. That's right. So that's whatever right. leaves you have, you need to utilize them one way or another. That's right. Yeah. You know, a lot of people too think that you have to just be very precise about layering those. You have mm -hmm. to have so many greens and so many browns, and and you know that's okay. Yeah. But th the important thing is just to have a nice mix. Mm -hmm. um, if you're obsessed with that, that's fine. But the ratio is, is about 30 parts brown to one part green. Mm -hmm. uh, the average garden produces more green than it does brown. Think mm -hmm. about it, you know, your yard clippings and things oh, like that. Oh, your lawn, yeah, lawn clippings. Yes. So. so you don't want your pile to get too soggy. Mm -hmm. If it starts getting soggy, then you add more brown material. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the moisture level in your compost bin should be about the, the uh, consistency of a wrung out sponge. Yeah, so you don't want it to be dripping, no, but you don't want it to crumble and be dry. Exactly. Dry. And there are many ways to take care of that. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they, that's when it comes, it's important to turn. Mm -hmm. Because if you're really strong and you can turn all those browns and greens and mix them up, great. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not quite as strong, you can take your pitchfork in there and actually just sort of wiggle it mm -hmm. and move it around. Just get some air in there. Because that needs air, air mm -hmm. also. Water, air, and Material. That's right. That's what it needs. And you can also, if you uh, make sure you have enough moisture in there, but you can mm -hmm. actually put a little well in the middle of mm -hmm. it and ho put water in there and it right. kind of soaks down through Now, the, the water to use is rainwater. Rainwater. Or well water. Or if you use uh, water from the water system, mm -hmm. city system, mm -hmm. uh, you should let it sit for a day. Exactly. Because that uh, chlorine's not going to help your compost at all. Most of us have rain barrels in yes, master gardens. Right, right. So. But you know, anyway. you can put a, a big bin out for to catch some rain sure. and then use that. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Water. Yeah. And then to maintain it, you just have to keep adding here and there and and yes. turning and, and monitoring it. Exactly. And then you'll know oh I forgot to bring the the compost, the final compost. I was going to bring a sample of it, but it's almost like a Almost like soil, but it is. You know. It's rich. It smells nice, mm -hmm. actually. The, it really does. It smells like soil. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when it's all finished. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then when you use your compost, how do you actually use your compost? Well, you know, you can use it in, in as a regular um, in your garden beds. Like I just planted my fall garden, mm -hmm. and I, of course, mixed some compost in before I started. Mm -hmm. You can use it to start your seeds. Uh -huh. um, you can put it in container planting, so just right. anything, just mm -hmm. to, to enhance and enrich the soil. Because it makes such a difference when you put the uh, compost yes. uh, around your plants. And Absolutely. then every time it rains or you know gets water, that's just seeping down into the soil, mm -hmm. all those nutrients. So it's, um, it's great to use no matter how you use it. That's it's right. whatever you put in it. That's and right. even if you have like a lawn that's got some areas that are um, composted, I mean, they're compacted mm -hmm. and uh, the lawn's not growing very well, you know, you just sprinkle a little of that compost in and kind of um, work it in a little bit. It's amazing what it'll do for your lawn. Absolutely. In, Absolutely. in addition to your flowers and your trees and shrubs. That's so right. You can use it for everything. You can. So, and there's also um, compost tea 
that you can make. It's fascinating. Which is unbelievable because um, we do have a um, little DVD or video about how to make compost tea. And um, we can show that in a few minutes. Um, Tony Lacasse is the host of this uh, Take Root uh, video. And he's going to be demonstrating how you actually make the compost tea yes. and how to use the compost tea. And he's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Take Root. Have you ever wondered how to make compost tea? Well, today we're in luck because we have the master tea maker and Benton County master gardener, Tony Lacazzi here to show us how it's done. Well, Tony, what is the benefit of making compost tea? Well, the main benefit from aerated compost tea is you're going to have healthier plants that are going to be more hot and cold resistant. They're going to be more disease and pest resistant. Uh, they're going to have higher productivity and uh, I brought today some of the basic things you're going to need to get started. So what I brought with me today is a basic setup for making aerated compost tea. Uh, you need a nice clean five gallon uh, bucket. You need a little uh, aerator pump that you can get at any pet supply store or Walmart or anywhere like that. They make them in different sizes so this one is in the uh, for um, aquariums that are in the 5 to 25 gallon range because I, I don't want uh, too, too many bubbles. You'll need some plastic tubing to go on your pump to go on the bucket and then at the end of that a little cigar aerator to create more bubbles. You'll need some uh, about a quart of uh, nice compost. I got this out of uh, my pile this morning but if you don't have your own compost pile you can use earthworm castings. And because we're making aerated uh, tea this time, uh, I use uh, from the paint store a paint bag. This one's been used multiple times. And then to hold the bag in the bottom of the bucket while it's aerating, I just got an old broken brick here to hold for weight. And then I have molasses uh, to add to the mixture to feed the microbes and the measuring cup for it and then when we get all through I have hydrogen peroxide for cleaning the bucket and the aerator. So what we do is you take your, your five gallon bucket, you put about four gallons of clean water in it. Now you can use rain water or you can use well water and just get started right away. If you have tap water uh, you need to let it set overnight or aerate it for an hour, either one, because you want to get the chlorine out of the water because the chlorine is going to kill the microorganisms that you're trying to promote here. So that's the first thing you do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our one quart of compost that we made that we've tied to a weight and we've attached a string so we can fish it out later and we're going to drop that right down into the water and that weight's going to take it down. It's sinking now. This is so we can pull it out later. You're going to take your pump that I showed you earlier, attach the little hose to it, that simple, and your little cigar shaped aerator and push that on and that's for more bubbles. And drop that little guy in there and then we are going to add two ounces of um, molasses, that's about half an ounce per gallon of water is the ratio. I'm going to pour that in there. I'm going to just go ahead and dip the cup all the way down in there and take my fingers here and make sure I get it all out. Gardeners, we're kind of used to getting our fingers a little dirty, aren't we? <laughs> all right, I want to make sure we get all that out. So we have that going. About this time at home, I usually burst into an Italian song because, you know, all Italian uh, cooks, they all sing when they're cooking, you know. So, And uh, now is it time to to plug in your aerator and then I leave this uh, on uh, all day long and so in the morning I, I get up and I go out and I go to my little unit here and the first thing I do is take the lid off and what you're going to smell is it's going to smell like sweetened iced tea and that's that's the scent that you want okay you've, you've been 18 to 24 hours of cooking now and now you're ready to spray and you want to spray you want to foliar feed in the morning hours. That's when the plants 
are and the leaves of the plants are more susceptible and then if you're use, if spraying pesticides you always do that in the EM, PM, pesticide. So hopefully now you're going to take this practice home uh, to your gardens and have great results with it. So for the Benton County Master Gardeners this is Tony Lacazzi with Take Root. Well, Tony is always so entertaining when oh, he talks he's about gardening. Great. He's wonderful. <laughs> uh, there is one thing he didn't mention in that um, that DVD is once you start the compost mm -hmm. tea and you have the bag in there, you can take the bag out in the evening, the first evening. And then let it percolate without the bag overnight. Um, after a certain point, I think the microorganisms, they raise and then they start to fall. So you want to take that bag of compost out like that evening mm -hmm. and then let it, let it percolate overnight. And then when you clean the, the, uh, everything with the, um, the hydrogen peroxide, you want to maybe soak that little cigar aerator in peroxide and make sure that everything's cleaned right. because anything left might um, not work too well the next time you use that equipment. So when everything would clean, you want to start all over fresh the right. next time. So it's uh, it's amazing. The compost tea, in addition to compost, it, it's it's almost like um, compost on steroids. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> one of our master gardeners has had a beautiful, beautiful garden. It was just gorgeous, beautiful plants, and she started using this compost tea. And she said her plants were even more beautiful. It's hard to imagine, but they were even more beautiful and less susceptible to insects. And she said it just made a big difference in her garden. We all should and brew we tea. We should be doing this, yes. every one of us. It's wonderful. So, but that's some things you can do in your garden now this year, this month, is, is start your compost tea and, and, uh, and spray your foliage and spray your plants. and and use it. So. Right. But there's other things we need to do in, in the garden in September. Mm -hmm. And um, first is your annuals are yes. kind of fading. They are. Yeah, they I are. Your fading. annuals and your herbs. But mm -hmm. you know if you keep deadheading them uh, for continuous bloom, mm -hmm. get them to bloom as long as you can, yeah. and continue to fertilize in yeah. September, that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But then you need to think about whether you're going to save those seeds All right. or save the plants mm -hmm. for, for next year. Right. You can overwinter some of your plants mm -hmm. in, in the garage or, mm -hmm. um, you know, take Things seeds. like um, geraniums. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I have, uh, I have um, brought my geraniums in in the garage and um, taken seeds out of the four o'clocks and the, uh, you know, different plants. So. Gotcha. And um, perennials, it's, you're going to still keep deadheading your perennials. And uh, those that are overcrowded, you can start dividing and moving to different places or give them to neighbors or, you know. Put them in the plant sale. Put them in the plant sale. Yes. Um, and it's the spring blooming plants that you'd want to divide now. And also peonies. Peonies like to be divided in the fall, not the spring. So, and they, they benefit from being divided so that they have more room to grow. Yes. So that's a, it's a good thing to do. And the mums should be starting to bloom now. If you've mm -hmm. been pinching back your mums till about mid-July, they're going to start blooming and they'll be in in full bloom in September. And then just watch for your water needs. We've had a lot of water in the spring. Oh, yes. And we've, I think we're over on our charts for the year, but um, we've had a week or two where there's no rain at all and it's pretty hot. So you have to monitor your water. I think we're gonna get some rain early in uh, September, but just monitor your water levels. And if your hostas and your daylilies are dividing, you're dividing those, it's really better to do it in the fall because that gives them a time to get established, you know, before they have to be showy. Yes. So they can get uh, established in the, in the fall and the winter, and then next spring they'll be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then. Well, how about roses? Well. You know, roses, um, the few, few Japanese beetles, I they seem to be going away or something. Well, uh, there was very few last year. I had mm -hmm. two this year that I saw. Oh, so only two? I, two, I remember <laughs> two. So I don't know if it's the climate change that we had with the droughts or, or what's causing it, but I like it because mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have a lot of Japanese beetles. But. Absolutely. And there should be a new flush of brooms uh, uh, for the next few months mm -hmm. for your roses. Uh, you keep deadheading them like, you, like right. we say about everything and, right. and checking for black spot, but you need to stop fertilizing after early September. Right. Let you them don't want to encourage growth in the winter. Right. So. And then lawns, uh, you still have to 
you know, deep water your lawns. Make sure it gets an inch of water a week. And September is a good time to overseed your fescue and, um, you know, just overseed your lawn so that they have a, a good stand in the spring. And then apply your fall pre-emergence to, uh, to control the winter weeds and the, and the, and the uh, weeds that come up later in September. So put a pre-emergent down in September. Right. And then trees and shrubs are planted. You can plant those in September. Mm -hmm. And um, fall planting is really the best time to be doing these because, like I said, they get their their uh, roots established and um, and they're just it's just easier in the fall for the plants to to be uh, planted and not have that summer stress on them right away. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to plant trees and shrubs. Make so, sure you mulch them. Really. And mulch them. Mm -hmm. But you, on your trees, you want to keep that mulch about an inch away from the base because sometimes that mulch will be too moist exactly. and it'll start some rotting on your on your trees and yes. some of your, your shrubs that have a, a good stem. So, Well, hey, I just planted my uh, fall veggies. Oh, it's the time for that. It is. It is. Um, as it starts to cool down, there are certain plants that do better in the, in the cooler weather mm -hmm. and they last longer. Uh, things like turnips, oh yeah, uh, mustard, or any of the greens. Yeah, your uh, lettuce, spinach, yeah. lettuce, mm -hmm. radishes. Uh, I've got uh, broccoli and um, uh, Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. going right now. And fortunately, no bugs yet, so right. I'm watching that very carefully. Well, some people are even putting in tomato plants again. I know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Starting over with the little, you know, late bloom, late mm -hmm. uh, fall tomatoes. Well, anything right up till the frost. Right. And even some of the plants after the first little cool weather and the frost, they're still doing do, mm -hmm. do well. Right. A lot oh, of people and, have turnips in the winter. Right. And one thing about the tomatoes, we didn't mention about compost, is uh -huh. you really don't want to put your tomato plants in your compost. Oh, we didn't. And you're right. We do not want to put your you tomato plants You don't want to compost your tomatoes. They could have that, um, what is that, they get on their stem that uh, fungus or, yes. or virus. It's um, best to put them in the trash and right. burn them. Yeah, we don't, we don't need the... Any disease plant, you don't want to put in your compost right. bin. Right, right. For sure. Right. Um, uh, yes, and then uh, invasive plants? Well, it's a good time to kill those really invasive plants. Um, they're going to be working in the winter, you know, with their roots, you know, strengthening their roots. And so like poison ivy and um, bush honeysuckle and privet, if you have those, or anything, any kind of invasive plant. I have one that got carried away in my garden. It's a vine, and it's, it's been uh, hard to control. So in the fall uh, is when the Roundup really works well on that, as long as the temperature is high enough. It's, you don't want to do it when it's real cold. But, right. yeah, but um, or your vinegar you know, concoction, if you use vinegar to kill your weeds. So it just causes them to absorb more into the roots in the fall. So anyway, I want to thank you and, um, uh, for joining us today. And if you have any more questions about gardening, uh, in September, remember the Master Gardeners has a good website. We do. It's bentoncountygardening.org, and it's just filled with a lot of gardening information. And then for more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, uh, you can go to their website, it's bellavistagardenclub.com. And um, our next meeting, meeting will be Wednesday, September 23rd, and uh, 11 o'clock at the United uh, Lutheran Church on Cooper Road in Forest Hills. And we will be um, awarding our Bella Vista Garden Club Dorothy Wallace Scholarship uh, this meeting. And along with that, Mayor Peter Christie will be there. Oh. And he's going to be discussing, discussing some joint projects between the city and the Garden Club. So that's going to be really interesting. I don't think we've ever had a mayor at our meeting before. So No, I mean, we have such a good combination now with the Garden Clubs and the mayor and, and even the POA. And is all working on together. Yes. You know, it's, we're all in the same community, so yes. we all have to work together. So that's going to be an interesting meeting. And uh, guests are always welcome. We have a little lunch and, and gardening information, and you know what could be better than that? So it's quite a spread, actually. It is. It's a wonderful little lunch, and, and we have every meeting. So thank you again for joining me. Always I just a really enjoyed it, and thank you're just you. full of information that I don't know, and I love to learn. So, um, and this this is uh, composting is something everyone should do. So we we need to get everybody started composting. So I hope you've enjoyed the program. And we'll join us again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses.